AI-generated Pixar movies, and whether I'd watch them or not. Oh. God. Well, let's just jump into it. To start things off, JFK. And because I'm kind of a history buff, I could probably help explain the plot here or some of the topics AI Pixar is going to hit on. I'll be honest, the JFK Pixar movie probably isn't that bad. Of, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they actually do this in real life. I mean, they probably won't recreate this scene. Well, actually, the problem is JFK had a lot of... Uh, also things going on in the background, you know. He was getting all the ladies. I don't know if Pixar is going to be able to cover that. But man, that'd be a crazy climax. Next one, square off. Now this is going to be epic. Who wouldn't want to see Tank Man versus a tank? And I know it might not be historically accurate since this happened in 1989, but movies are supposed to blend the truth a little bit. Can we get a Pixar Mao Zedong in there? Question is, will this or will this not be banned in China? Since you're not supposed to talk about certain events that happened in a square. I'm actually pretty sure the entire Chinese government would hit the delete button on all of Disney if they tried this. Next, Pixar presents Normandy. You know, I was gonna say maybe this wouldn't be <laughs> like completely out of the question like other AI Pixar movies are, but then I started imagining AI no-no Germans at that time. Like, how would they do that? Like, I mean, <laughs> I, uh, I, I mean, he's kind of the main antagonist to Normandy, right? I mean, I guess you could just kind of have the enemy be this faceless sort of thing and not show them. And maybe just have like a really watered down, wait, what is going on with some of these faces? Some of these people have clearly already stormed Normandy and it didn't go so well. They're like horribly disfigured forever. But I watched this... Yeah, uh, who wouldn't? This one by far is probably the least offensive we've seen so far. Give Pixar like another hundred years, they will make this movie. I mean, Ridley Scott is already supposed to come out with Napoleon next year or whatever, a couple months. I would absolutely watch this. I, I would be curious how like how Pixar's take would be on this stuff. That is getting a 10 out of 10. This one is probably um, going over some people's heads, I'm, I'm assuming. This is, uh, this is Ted Kaczynski, and he is making something that is going to go boom. Very famously known for saying um, the Industrial Revolution is one of the worst things to happen, something like that. Oh, the Industrial Revolution and its consequences have been disastrous to the human race. It's so weird that my pal Ted did that in the 80s, but it did take until like 2023 for, uh, I don't know, people understand what he was talking about. A lot of kids really love it, I guess you could say nowadays. I mean, yeah, I would definitely watch this. Now, this just seems epic. The average Florida man starring in his own film with a sidekick crocodile. I don't really know what's going on here. You could definitely make like a cameo to Disney World. You could probably throw in some face-eating zombie people in there. I don't I don't really know. Why not? That That's perfect. Perfect Pixar material right there. Leopold II, again, something that probably people, uh, people are just... It's, it might go over some people's heads. This was the Belgian king, and uh, yes, he had the Congo. Why does he... Why does he have a basketball? Today, Belgium is just thought of as being this funny waffle slash chocolate country. It's small, doesn't do much. I mean, it does have the headquarters for NATO and I think the EU. However, Belgium's colony in the Congo between 1908 and 1960 was a horrible place. There's no other way to put it. You would not want to be here because uh, they were, they did horrible things to the people here. If you didn't make a certain quota, they wanted certain material. If you didn't make that quota, then, well, yeah, uh, you would not be lending a hand. You would be lending a different hand, though, as punishment. I would not want to watch this. Now, the problem with Pixar Presents Vlad, we don't really know how the story's gonna end. I mean, I suppose there are plenty of movies about real-life people where we don't know how the story ends, but I have a feeling if we wait, the, the, the plot might get more juicy. I mean, the interesting thing about this guy is that he was, like, a KGB agent. He also spent a lot of time in Germany during the early days. I don't know if Pixar wants to cover that. They could have a scene where he's riding a horse shirtless for whatever reason. Besides that, I feel like the plot actually wouldn't be that interesting. Again, we have to wait. So at the moment, I will pass on this Pixar movie. But 10, 20 years when we get some more, uh, I don't know. He's got to do more things for the plot. So this is basically AI Pixar presents um, Benito Mussolini, the former fascist leader of Italy during World War II. We also have the black shirts down here. They, I feel like they should be wearing black shirts. 
shirts. I mean, you know, in animation, usually the symbolism is kind of more straightforward. One thing I find interesting is that the AI decided to animate Benito Mussolini here as pretty skinny. So it makes me think we would talk more about his younger life, which is interesting because Benito Mussolini was the first fascist leader, and people forget how long he ruled Italy before even WW2 started. I feel like if the AI generated him more like this, then we'd be focusing on Benito Mussolini during WW2, which would be kind of a funny <laughs> plot, especially considering this is about as big as Italy really got during 1942 and 1943. This was the extent of their gains in World War II. I don't think he'd be like this epic main character. I think he'd be this, it'd be more of a comedy. He looks too, like, scary right here. Like, I don't think, I, honestly, I'm getting bad vibes from this film. Like, I don't think they're gonna really do it the way I'd want them to do. I don't want to see this movie. If you look like this, yeah, I'm all for it. A little bit more mixed about Discord. I feel like this film would cover a lot of I don't know. I don't know. It might be the least kid-friendly, but weird stuff that happens on Discord. But maybe they just won't touch in on that. We're just, I guess we're just dealing with, uh, you know the characters from WALL-E when they're floating around in chairs? They basically could make that a prequel to this. This is a prequel to that movie, I guess, pretty much. Don't, well, I don't want to see it. Pixar presents Hero. Oh, no. I, <laughs> I didn't realize they change it to Hiroshima. The actual city is spelled a little bit differently, but all right. This makes me feel like the film is actually going to be about this guy changing history. It's going to be like an alternative history Pixar movie where, I don't know, the Japanese zeros somehow stop the, uh, the, the booming of Hiroshima. Actually, maybe not. Maybe the nuke does drop and this guy just saves a bunch of people. I don't, I don't really know how you would from a nuclear blast, you know. Ah. I really wish, I mean, it's it's horrible, but the AI generated movie should have used the Imperial Japanese flag. That is uh, pretty offensive though. You, you're not really supposed to use that considering all the horrible things Japan did. A little bit of a different take, but you know, I don't know why this is making me think of the film Oppenheimer. Now that like some time has passed, I gotta be honest, I, I, I didn't really like it that much to be quite honest. And I'm a history guy. I just thought it was a little bit like, why did Christopher Nolan choose to go in that direction? Like there was so much he could have done, but he decided not to do a lot. The whole last hour of just the talking. This, um, I like the title. There should be an animated movie called Nam, but it probably shouldn't be uh, dealing with these topics. Uh, at least not the Vietnam War, I guess. Is there any way to cover the Vietnam War in, in Pixar style? Probably not. I'm trying to think. No. No. Yeah, no, there's no way. I would be curious to see this movie to see what they do, though. Honestly, honestly, why not? Why, why not make this, Pixar? I want this, actually. This is, I mean, I don't know if it's a billion dollar movie, but I bet you... <laughs> Give it 10 more years, let the legacy that is, or was, Harambe continue to grow, then drop the movie. That actually might be a billion dollar idea right there. I, I think it could be. You don't even, like, it doesn't even need to talk about the real life. Just, just make a gorilla do cool things, call him Harambe, don't even talk about his end. Or you can, I don't, I <laughs> absolutely want to watch this movie. Like, I'm actually trying to think how this could be bad. I don't really, I mean, I don't think... I don't know. Maybe get the approval of the kid that, you know, was saved, as long as he's okay with it. Which Harambe was oofed in 2016, so how about for the 10 year anniversary? Speaking of a billion dollar idea, it's not even a, a question. Like, Disney, get the rights, make this movie. It can be the worst movie ever. Everyone's gonna go see it. I don't even have anything to say about this. Yeah, I wanna see it. Now, I don't know if this could be a full length feature film, but you know how Pixar does those shorts before their feature films? This would be absolutely incredible for that. There's actually like podcasts. Uh, Edgar here has gone and talked about uh, his experience with all that. This might be a billion dollar idea in Mexico for sure. I'm just trying to think of the plot though to maybe like thicken it out. I, I mean, even making it to 10 minutes, this Pixar short would be a little bit difficult. Maybe just talk about his adventure adventures in the river. This one's called Independent Croatia, and I'm assuming we would be covering um, the fall of Yugoslavia here. Oh no, nope, nope. Uh, I've got my time periods mixed up. I had to. I had that context. I need to, to Google that context. We're still talking World War II. Arguably, uh, it was even more insane. Well, again, probably going to need uh, to be a short. There's, pro there's not a lot that's going to happen in this feature film. You probably can't turn it into a three-hour long epic. And also, the dialogue is, is going to be pretty quick. There's not 
Uh, yeah. I don't know if I want to talk about the PewDiePie bridge incident. It's weird how synonymous PewDiePie has become with bridge. Now, don't give Disney any ideas. They're pretty desperate to make Star Wars work again. They're making all sorts of content about it. This is a part of the Star Wars lore and timeline where we don't know exactly what Anakin did. Maybe Anakin was just going to show them how to use a lightsaber. Wait, no, there is a uh, part in the movie. Who is it? Obi-Wan? The younglings? They're gone. Yeah, something like that. He didn't say gone. That Yeah, he did take out the younglings. We don't really know how much time passed in between that, though. Like, maybe the younglings took themselves out. He was just trying to give them a uh, really early lightsaber lesson. Regardless whether... I don't really care. I do... I would want to watch this. Disney Plus. Like, put put it... Just put it on your platform. I want to know exactly what happened in that scene. <laughs> well, I'm just, just saying. Was it quick? Did he... Did he decapitate? Like, you know... I mean, you knew... <sighs> I, this is the one that everyone saw. We already showed him earlier. You know what's crazy about this? If there wasn't a movie about, like, a comedy with Hilter not that long ago, I would think this is insane. But they did release Jojo Rabbit with, uh, guess who? And discussing a lot of things. So maybe there would be, in an insane universe, a way to cover this in an, like, you have to create an alternative universe. Or he has to be, I don't know. First of all, this Pixar movie is just called Adolf. Maybe it's another guy. Maybe this is just another guy with the same name and a similar mustache, but he has nothing to- Now that would be interesting. <laughs> like it talks about him trying to live his life. He lives in like Ohio or something. Because remember this name Adolf was actually extremely popular. It's extremely popular German name. All, all around the world. People don't really name anyone this anymore. That would be interesting though. Like he's just trying to live his life. That's the only way I feel like you could do this. If that is the plot, yeah, I'd see that. That'd be fun. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah, I just, uh, I, I don't know. That's that. Yeah. That's the only way you can't it's just, Okay. And big thanks to my patrons this Drew, month. Drew, I'm your dad, back with the milk. Look outside. Carino is best girl. The clone's training is complete and is Frederick I Tiblin, can't sleep Lad, without Australia and is real. I am not a paid actor. The great Ralph Jack Johns, Johns, annoying friends. Sebi, if you hate this, I love you. The Mexican, 7, 6, 5, 6, 10. Robert Rye, the pie. Caramel, Luxembourg S. Luxembourg lover. And why am I doing this?